bleeding purple and gold from the heart of Los Angeles. This is the LakersNation.com podcast with your host, Trevor Lane. Welcome to today's show. As always, we are brought to you by LakersNation.com and CLNS Media. Today's show is sponsored by ProFlowers.com. Just go to ProFlowers.com and use promo code LAKERS and you get 20% off all bouquets of $29 or more. Really fantastic quality. I use it myself. Definitely go check them out. ProFlowers.com, promo code LAKERS and you get 20% off. So, Today's show, we're going to be talking about a number of different things. I've seen a few different topics getting kicked around. Um, if you go to the reviews section of our iTunes, you can always make sure you can uh, throw in any topics that you'd like to hear uh, discussed on here. Just leave a five-star review and make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the show. Leave your question in the review section. We'll make sure we discuss it. So I've brought in Lakers Nation writer Hannah Kulik to help break down a few things. And first of all, Hannah, thanks so much for, for coming on. And then we'll, we'll kind of explain what's going on with this show. Yes, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so Hannah, we've had kind of a, a rough day today, haven't we? Yes, we have, Trevor, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> so here's what's what's been going on, or here's what, what happened. Well, first of all, my day has just been not good. It's been a, it's been a rough day. My fantasy football team, and this is relatively minor, but my fantasy football team lost by 0.1 points tonight. 0.1, I'm knocked out on 0.1. Oh, it was an absolute heartbreaker. I got to play pickup basketball this morning, tweaked my back. It's been one thing after another. And then get this, guys, we had a very special guest coming on the show today, and we recorded the show. It was awesome. We had such a good time. Hannah and I both got to interview our, our special guest for this week. And lo and behold, about five minutes after the show ended, my laptop crashed and the show was lost. It was gone. Now, fortunately, our special guest has agreed to come back on um, shortly in in the next few weeks. So we're going to have that person back. And so we'll still have them on there. So I'm not even going to tell you guys who it was. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a good episode. We're gonna have that guest back on. Uh, but I, you know, I've been upset most of the day about what had happened. I've never had that happen before, where where the file just got corrupted and it was just gone. So it was a bummer. But then I got to thinking, you know what? It's easy for people to get just wrapped up in all the negativity, and that's not just in our own personal lives and the the stuff I was dealing with today and everything and and the stuff that we can we can deal with. We also see it with the Lakers. We see people that just get all wrapped up in oh Lonzo's not shooting well or or why isn't Brandon Ingram stronger or, or whatever. Luke's rotations made me angry. Right? It's easy to get wrapped up in all the negative and sometimes we miss all the positives that are going on right in front of us. So. I thought today would be a good day for Hannah and I to go through all the things that are going on right in the world of the Los Angeles Lakers. Let's spread a little bit of positivity and turn what has been a, a little bit of a rough day upside down. Hannah, does that sound like a plan? It sounds like a plan, Trevor. I honestly thought you were joking after we did the interview and you text me and say you're never going to believe it. And I was like, oh, he's just he's pranking me. But you know what? I think this is going to end up being a great episode. We just got to make it positive, and we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about, so I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I mean, the, the Lakers are on a two-game winning streak, so that that in and of itself is awesome. There's some really, really good things going on, and you know what? Let's just kick things off here. I've got okay. here of the, the top 10. So number, well, I guess we'll we'll start with number 10, okay, and we'll work our, our way up to Okay, sounds so good. So let's start with number 10. Number 10. On the best things going on in the world of the Los Angeles Lakers right now, and I've got Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball. I mean, this guy is the number two overall draft pick. People are jumping all over him for his poor shooting, and yes, that is an issue. Yes, his dad might be a little bit crazy, or maybe he's a genius. We're not really sure on that just yet. But his passing has been tremendous. It's been basically basically as advertised. His defense has been better than I expected. And his court vision has been really, really impressive. I think people need to give this guy a little bit of slack and appreciate the good things that he is doing out there on the basketball court. Do you agree with that, Hannah? 
Yeah, I completely agree. I've been really impressed with Lonzo Ball, especially defensively. You know, when we drafted him, no one was talking about his defense. And, you know, they were saying he wasn't too great on defense. But I've been extremely impressed with what I've been seeing from him defensively, especially lately. He's really able to use his size as an advantage. He's been getting steals. He's been blocking shots. Obviously, he has a very high basketball IQ, so he's able to read the offense well. So I've been really impressed with Lonzo Ball, and I've got to give him a lot of credit. I really respect how he handles himself on and off the court. He's, you know, a guy who doesn't make excuses when he has a bad game. He gets in there and, you know, usually the next game he's able to rebound. And I think we've only touched, you know, the bottom of the surface with Lonzo Ball. It's only going to get better. And I've still been impressed with what I've seen. That's such a great point that he's been using his size too. I mean, we see him not just contributing on the defensive boards, but now he's starting to take guys into the paint like Kemba Walker. Right, the other night, Kemba Walker mm-hmm. is not not a big point guard. He's pretty small, and Lonzo immediately goes and takes him inside, and he uses that that height advantage. So, yeah, I mean, Lonzo is. I think really he's ahead of the game in a lot of areas. Yes, his shooting needs to catch up, but and I think it will. I think it will once his confidence comes around. But I think there's a lot to be really impressed with, and maybe maybe the most impressive thing about him is not necessarily on the court, but off the court. You look at what this guy is dealing with. I mean, his dad has been in a Twitter feud with the president of the United States. And somebody <laughs> also goes out there and just doesn't care about anything other than the team winning. I mean, that in and of itself is remarkable for a guy that is barely 20 years old. Yeah, Alonzo is, you know, mature way beyond his years. I have, I can't even say enough for how much respect I have for him, just the way he handles everything, especially because the media is so ruthless, especially regarding his dad. And, you know, Lonzo's really done a great job, like you've mentioned, just being able to block that out and just focus on basketball. So I'm really impressed with Lonzo Ball, and I, I like him a lot. So only good things to talk about for Lonzo right now, besides his shooting. But like you said, that'll get better with time and confidence. All right, so number nine, number nine, the Lakers are once again watchable. And you know what? It's, oh, yeah. easy, it's, it's <laughs> so easy to overlook this, but the Los Angeles Lakers are actually a fun team. I mean, I, I listen to a lot of different podcasts. I mean, being a podcast host, I, I try to make sure that I'm up on things. And just from hearing around the league, a lot of different podcast hosts and reading a lot of different writers, they when they talk about the teams that they enjoy watching – when they're going to flip on a team on League Pass, the Lakers are regularly starting to pop up on that list and not because they're just a West Coast game and they just happen to be on at that time. People are enjoying watching this Lakers team. They're enjoying watching Brandon Ingram grow. We're going to talk about him in just a bit. They're enjoying watching the pace. I'm having fun watching these games, even the games that they lose. I feel like the things that they do wrong are mostly things that are fixable. So this is a team that is exciting. They are fun to watch, and you can see the potential there. It's there for them to be better than what they are right now, and they're going to get there. I have I have a lot of confidence in this group. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, you know, our record right now is 10-15, and 15, and you just get the feeling we could have won a few more games. We could technically have a better record, but like you said, we've been really watchable this year. And, you know, for the past few years, that's something that's really great because the past few years, there have been times where I've had to turn off the TV. The games have gotten so ugly. And there really hasn't been any games this season that I can really think of. I mean, maybe there's been a few, especially, you know, the disappointing losses against the Clippers and stuff, a few kind of heartbreakers. But for the majority of the time, we've been an exciting team to watch. Yeah, I mean, and that's just it. The Lakers are, well, you know what Magic Johnson said at the beginning of the the season, actually way back in September, before the season even began, he said that he wanted the Lakers to be a fun team again. He said he wanted them to focus on pace and defense and, and all these things. And so far it's come true. I mean, the Lakers are showing that they can adapt to the NBA, to the, to the new NBA. The three-point shooting hasn't come along just yet. But you know what? They are finding ways to be successful. And I think that's something that's, that's making them endearing for fans, right? I mean, these guys are trying to get the best out of themselves each and every night. So this is, I think, a watchable team right now. Speaking of which, of them maximizing the talents that they do have, I mentioned that the three-point shooting is not great. But number eight on this list of Lakers positivity, the Lakers right now are first number one overall in the league in points in the paint. To me, that says that they understand what works for them. They know they don't have the best shooters, so they're making up for it by being really good at attacking the basket. And I am loving 
the way these guys are crashing the boards and driving hard to the rim, and we're seeing that from multiple players, and that's not something you see from every team in the league. Yeah, well, it's really important for the Lakers to be, you know, play more in the paint because they're not great offensively in the half court set. They're the best when they're able to get a stop on defense and Lonzo's able to do that outlet pass to Kuzma or to Ingram or to Randall or whoever, and they're able to get that easy layup. And it's great that they're starting to play at that faster pace and they're really realizing that that's when they're at their best is when they're moving the ball up and down the court and when they're able to, you know, be able to score in the paint. Because like we've been saying for this whole season, we're not a great shooting team, so we've got to be able to play in our strengths. And so it's great to that Lakers are first in the league in points in the paint for sure. So let's move on to number seven. And number seven, I have a feel, feeling that we can talk about this one quite a bit. Number seven, Brandon Ingram. This is a guy oh, who, yeah. who, I mean, in last season, people were, I mean, freaking out. We had Chicken Littles running around saying the sky is falling because Brandon Ingram was not an immediate superstar, right? He was the number two overall pick last season. And he struggled. He was one of the youngest players in the league. He had a really tough time. And this guy has really come into his own. Hannah, what do you like about his game this year? You know, I've really liked how he's handled himself as well because – like you said, people were kind of freaking out over Brandon Ingram, especially in the beginning of the season. He maybe wasn't playing as well. Obviously, Magic Johnson over the summer put tremendous pressure on him and you know threw out there that he was expecting Ingram to average 20 points a game, which just, in my opinion, wasn't really realistic. And so I think people were kind of already going into the season with really unrealistic expectations expectations for Brandon Ingram to start and you know for him he maybe didn't get off to the best start but especially these last few weeks man I mean he's been unbelievable we've seen him get new career highs um we saw him over the Philadelphia 76ers the other night get that game winner which I was freaking out about I don't know about you Trevor I'm sure you were home freaking out but I was jumping up and down I felt so happy for him because you know he wanted that shot so it was nice to see him hit his I think that was his first game winner so I've been really impressed with Brandon Ingram I think he's really grown tremendously especially this past month oh my gosh Hannah you mentioned that that game winner <laughs> against the, the Philadelphia 76ers I was so I'm at home I'm watching watching this game the Lakers are on the road I'm at home watching watching this game and my wife's in the other room my daughter has just gone to sleep Oh no! <laughs> he hits that shot. Now, fortunately, by by this point, you know she's she's about a year and a half. So at this point, I'm I'm kind of in parent mode here. So I I, I knew not to just you know yell at the top of my lungs or anything like that. So I did like this silent scream and this spastic fist pump, along <laughs> with, right? And, and my wife looks in from the next room. She goes, "Oh, something something good must have happened." I said. I said, yeah, Brandon Ingram just hit a hit a uh, buzzer beater, or not a buzzer beater, but the game winner, right? 0. 0.8 seconds left on the clock, and he just, just knocked in a three. It was just such a great moment, and, and I felt like the Lakers needed that. They needed that that big moment to, to kind of lift everybody up because they had been on that five-game losing streak before that, and there was Brandon Ingram stepping up when they needed him most, and of course, we can't forget Lon- Lonzo Ball. I thought made a fantastic read on that play. Yes. You know, some people actually were criticizing him for not taking the shot there, but that's not who he is. That's not who, who Lonzo Ball is as a player. He made the right basketball play, hit the open man, and Brandon Ingram absolutely buried that And one thing that we're seeing, and I'm noticing this more and more as the season goes on, is that the Lakers, whenever they need a basket, Brandon Ingram is their go-to guy. If it's the end of the quarter and the shot clock's winding down, or the clock's winding down, they give the ball to Brandon Ingram up top and they let him create one-on-one. He is becoming their go-to scorer. No, he's not averaging 20 points a game like Magic Johnson said he expected him to or anything. But hey, 16.2 points per game right now for Brandon Ingram. He has overtaken Kyle Kuzma for the lead on the team. And man, I mean, this this kid is playing fantastic basketball and he's certainly somebody to be excited about for the Lakers right now. Yeah, I agree. And Trevor, props to you for being able to hold in that scream because I was nervous that the cops were going to come because I was screaming so <laughs> loud. I swear that's actually happened before. A couple of years back, me, my dad and I were watching a game. We screamed. I forgot. It was probably a Kobe game winner, honestly. And we screamed so loud. The neighbors actually called the cops. They thought someone was being murdered. So <laughs> props to you for being able to hold that in because that's something that I have to work on. But yes, Brennan Ingram's definitely been successful 
very exciting to watch. And, you know, it's exciting because he's the guy that we want to have the ball in his hands. And so it's great to see, you know, that he's got the potential and he's really trying to show. So when the Lakers win and the cops aren't called, <laughs> that, that's a good night right there, right? Yes, yes. All right, let's let's move on to number six on our list, Kyle Kuzma. My favorite overall pick, Hannah. Your favorite. In fact, Hannah, you just you just take this one. This is this is your guy. Tell us about Kyle Kuzma. What else can I say about Kyle Kuzma? I mean, he has just been unbelievable for the Lakers. He's you know completely been better than anyone could have ever thought although I will say for the millionth time I predicted it after seeing him at the draft combine I knew he was going to be a great player but I will say I didn't think he was going to be this good I know you just said Ingram officially overtook him as the Lakers leading scorer but he was the Lakers leading scorer so now he's second yeah I think he's second um he's just been unbelievable he had kind of a rocky game against the 76ers and I was interested to see how he was going to come bounce back after that game because that was really his first game where he wasn't wasn't too good but he came back and man did he bounce back against the uh Charlotte the other night he had 14 rebounds 12 points he had more rebounds than Mr. Dwight Howard which was something that I was very excited about because anytime we can beat Dwight Howard in anything I always get excited I'm still a little bitter over that one so there's really just what can I say about Kyle Kuzma he's been great offensively very versatile offensively too his outside shot when it's not falling, he's been able to get to the rim. He's been able to, you know, play to his strong suits. And I know Luke Walton also said, you know, that he thinks that Kuzma's biggest weakness is his defense, which I do agree. He still has a lot of room to improve on that. But I've still been very impressed impressed with his effort that he's been giving on defense. I think he's really trying every night. So he had a great block the other night in, uh, against Charlotte. So I just can't really rave enough about Kyle Kuzma, honestly, Trevor. What do you have to say about him? Well, I mean, that's that's <laughs> such a great point, the, the defensive effort. And that's key, really. I mean, Kyle Kuzma wants to be a very good defender in this league, and he has the skill set to be a good defender. The Lakers, their defensive scheme overall has relied a lot on switching, and that's what Kyle Kuzma's strength is. He's got the foot speed and the versatility to switch out on opposing guards if he gets caught in a pick-and-roll situation, but he's still strong enough to bang in the paint and grab rebounds. As we saw, you mentioned 14 rebounds the other day. So Kyle Kuzma has the ability to become a defender, a good defender, but Luke Walton is right. Right now, he is not a great defender, but that tool, the tools are there for him to become one. So I think Luke Walton actually calling him out defensively is a good thing, because it means that Kyle Kuzma is going to pay extra attention to that side of the ball. We know already that he can score, right? I mean, he was the late oh, yeah. leading, leading scorer. He's shooting 49% from the field. He's hitting 37% from three. I mean, this guy can put the ball in the basket. And his maturity around the basket is really, really impressive. The, the variety of finishes that he has around the rim, plus the ability to step out and shoot the three. I mean, at this point, it's hard to consider... Kyle Kuzma anything but the steal of the draft at the number 27th overall pick. I mean, we sh- and we should, of course, mention that he was the, the rookie of the month for this past month for the entire Western Conference. Nobody saw that coming out of the 27th overall pick. No, definitely not. Kyle Kuzma's honestly, every time I watch him, I'm just in awe, especially how mature he plays. He just doesn't look like a rookie out there. He just plays with so much confidence. I honestly just cannot. If you want to get me talking about Kuzma, I don't know. This show might run over a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's move on then. As much as we love Kyle Kuzma, let's move on so that we don't make this show two hours on accident or anything like that. Right. <laughs> but before we get to number five on our list, we got to talk real quick about Pro Flowers. Awesome, awesome company, proflowers.com. There are a lot of people that you don't get to see around the holidays, especially now. It seems like for me, my family is all spread out all over the place. And sometimes a greeting card just isn't quite enough. It's not enough of a, a warm greeting, especially around this time of year. So sending a bouquet can be a great way to express your warm holiday wishes and feelings the way that a, a card or a gift card or something like that just, just can't quite do it. So 
Pro Flowers recently sent me a sample of their, their winter brocade. It's red and white, very Christmassy. The, the colors are just absolutely wonderful. I was amazed by how, how bright the flowers were. They, they last forever. I can't believe it. These things are actually still sitting on my counter right now. They greet us in the kitchen every morning. They're, they're just phenomenal. The quality is, is wonderful. So you can get a bouquet or a festive plant for uh, from Pro Flowers just like I did. It's perfect. It's not the same traditional gift or anything like that. It says so much more. There are the candy cane roses, which are what I got. Those are a great option for a holiday gift. They look beautiful. They're great for a December birthday also, an anniversary, anything like that. You can also get a classic mini Christmas tree. It comes with lights and ornaments, which is awesome. I love that it's already got lights and ornaments on it. It's one of the best parts about Christmas is decorating stuff, right? So no matter what you choose though, the cool thing is that Pro Flowers has partnered with us and you can get 20% off. So all you gotta do is go to proflowers.com, use the promo code LAKERS, and you get 20% off any bouquet that is $29 or more. And these bouquets are guaranteed to stay fresh. You control the delivery date. You get big bloom for your buck, as Pro Flowers likes to say. It is a, a phenomenal company. Go check it out, proflowers.com. Use that promo code LAKERS and brighten up your holiday. All right, Hannah, let's talk about number five on our list of positive Lakers stories, and that is Julius Randle really doing a phenomenal Draymond Green impression. I mean, for years, it feels like Julius Randle has been projected to be like a new version of Draymond Green, which by that I mean sort of a, a somewhat undersized power forward slash center who can do a little bit of everything, shoot from the outside, create for others, make plays, can defend the rim, can defend on the perimeter, just a guy who is a, a virtual Swiss army knife. And Julius Randle this season has taken such a big leap forward. I think you could even argue that he has been the best player on the Lakers, especially on, on certain nights. He has been the best overall player on the team. What are you loving about Julius Randle's game right now? Yeah, Trevor, you've really been on that Julius juice lately. I've been hearing on your podcast, but you know what? It's for a good reason. Julius Randle is a player that obviously, you know, had a lot of high expectations. Like you said, everyone kind of wanted him to be that kind of Draymond, you know, green role for the Lakers. And he really is starting to come into his own. Obviously, in the beginning of the season, it got off to a little bit of a rocky start when Luke, you know, put him on the bench. And obviously, Julius wasn't happy about that. But I... I actually think that that's been a really good thing for him because he's been able to come off the bench and really dominate against other teams' bench players, which is something that I think has just helped his confidence grow even more. We're starting to see his outside shot falling in. He's trying harder on defense. Julius Randle has really been really great this past month, and he's starting to come into his own. So it's definitely very exciting to see for Julius. It's it's making it interesting with all the trade rumors and stuff regarding him at the beginning of the season. I, I don't know. The way he's been playing, I don't know if the Lakers – should trade him now. He He's starting to be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we've been talking about quite a bit recently. Has Julius Randle now gotten to a point where he is so good that the Lakers just have to find a way to keep him next summer? We know he's going to be a restricted free agent. It's all just going to come down to if the Lakers are able to get LeBron James and Paul George, I don't know if they're going to be able to have the cap space to afford to sign Julius Randle. But it's definitely a possibility, especially if they're not able to get two players, which might be a little unrealistic at this point, if I'm being honest. Julius is definitely another great option. So I would not be I would not be upset if we ended up just having Julius come back next season. I don't I wouldn't really look to even trade him this season unless there's something that we can get that's pretty good for him or if maybe if we're able to get rid of Dang's contract. But I don't know. It's definitely making it harder. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, that's his job this season, right? Is to is to try to make the decision difficult on the Lakers and to try to make sure that he gets as big of a payday as possible in free agency. This is a guy who's coming off of his rookie deal. But, you know, you mentioned that I've been on the, the Julius Randle train lately, and I have been. I wrote a piece for, for LakersNation.com all about how Julius Randle should start to see more minutes and everything and, Rand and potentially even move into the starting lineup. The Lakers starting lineups, or the Lakers um, five-man units, I should say, the best five-man units they've had, the ones that have had a positive net rating, there's only been a few of them, 
But the one common factor between the Lakers' five-man units that have a positive net rating and have played at least, I want to say it was like 25 minutes per game and, and, and have played multiple games, they all include Julius Randle at center. Because his ability to switch and his ability to now protect the rim has made such a huge difference for the Los Los Angeles Lakers, both on offense and defense. Listen to this stat. Per 36 minutes last season, Julius Randle blocked .6 shots per game. So not even one shot in 36 minutes. This season, he's at 1.4. More than double. I mean, you see it. The eye test confirms that Julius Randle is protecting the rim. You look at the stats, it's definitely happening. He is becoming a rim protect- protector. And last I checked, he was actually a plus defender everywhere on the floor, which is something that you couldn't say about him in the past. That was actually one of his biggest weaknesses. So watching Julius Randle get out there and work has been so, so impressive. And number four on our list, the guy who has been... Well, Julius Randle's partner in crime since they came into the league together. And these are the two guys, him and Randle, that tore up the Charlotte Hornets in the fourth quarter. In fact, the Lakers ran one play over and over again for the final few minutes of the game. And it absolutely decimated the Hornets. And that was the pick and roll between Julius Randle and number four on our list, Jordan Clarkson having a career year. He's becoming an efficient scorer. He has been absolutely phenomenal. What are you seeing out of him, Hannah? Yeah, Jordan Clarkson was, man, he was phenomenal Saturday night against the Charlotte Hornets. He was the Lakers' leading scorer with 22 points. He had 14 of them in the fourth quarter. And he's just been really running the point guard position well. I know in the beginning of the season it was supposed to be Tyler Ennis doing that, but Jordan's just been playing so well. He's kind of taken that spot from Tyler. What I've really liked about JC is there's always kind of – you know, people are always saying he's a ball hog, he's this, that, but I've really been seeing him. He's been playing great at the point this whole season. And I think he's really kind he's buying into the whole, like playing for the team, which is something that I think was maybe lacking from his game, I will admit. And that's something that he's really been improving on this season. So I can't say enough about Jordan Clarkson too, especially his, his um, effort on defense. He's been great. We saw it Charlotte. We saw, we've seen it all season, but we especially saw it against Charlotte the other night. So Clarkson has always been something of an inefficient scorer, and that has changed this season. He right now is actually leading the Lakers in PER, which is player efficiency rating. He is um, he's just doing phenomenal stuff out there. He's shooting 48 percent from the field, 37 percent from downtown, both career highs. So Jordan Clarkson has been been absolutely tremendous in terms of his efficiency and I think that's what has made him so much more dangerous this season it's almost kind of a well not almost it is a bummer that his salary at about it's going to be about 12 and a half million dollars next season it's going to be hard for them to keep him and Randall and go after a max player so they're going to have some tough decisions to make and kudos to guys like Clarkson and Randall for making it a very tough decision Exactly. You know, looking back on the Lakers season, I don't really know where we would be without Jordan Clarkson because there's been many nights where he's been the the Lakers' leading scorer. So he's been able to really, you know, provide a ton of offense, which is something that the Lakers really lack. So JC's been having a great season. I've been really impressed. I think he's really grown a lot as well. Number three on our list actually fits in perfectly with this because the other night, uh, Luke Walton knew he was going to get some criticism for, by the way, number three is Luke Walton. Knew he was going to get some criticism for benching Lonzo Ball in the fourth quarter. I mean, that was going to be the headline, and I saw it. Uh, I saw it on, from a few different outlets. The headline was Lakers win over Charlotte. Ball sits fourth quarter. Right, that was the of story. Even though, even though Lonzo wasn't the only one to sit in the fourth quarter, but Luke Walton has been improving as a coach. This is only his second full year as a NBA head coach. And you look at what he has done. He's getting criticized a lot more online for his rotations and things like that. We're seeing it on Twitter. People are ranting and raving about him. But you know what? You look at what Luke Walton has done out there. He made the right decision in that game against the Hornets because Jordan Clarkson was rolling. Julius Randle was rolling. Those guys were were doing phenomenally out there on the court. And it would have been inappropriate to bring back Alonzo Ball into that situation or bring back Larry Nance Jr. or bring back Brooke Lopez. All three of those guys sat the fourth quarter. It wasn't just Lonzo. And after the game, Luke Walton came out firing. He commented right away that 
about the whole situation with Lonzo sitting and mentioned that Lonzo wasn't the only one to sit the fourth quarter and that the media should kind of take a, take a little bit of a step back and realize that he is doing what he needs to do to win games. And that's not a slight to Lonzo. That's not a slight to any of the other players. Sometimes a coach just needs to roll with a hot hand. I like what I'm seeing from, from Luke Walton right now. I think he is starting to live up to the potential that the Lakers saw in him as a head coach. Yeah, I completely agree. And you know, it's so interesting about the media because if Luke would have put Lonzo in and we would have ended up losing, you know, the title would have been, you know, Luke put, puts Lonzo back in and Lonzo loses the game for Lakers or something. They're just, the media can be so ruthless, man. But you know what? The Lakers are a team without any really big stars. Obviously, we've got a few that are on the cusp. But, you know, right now we don't have any big stars. We have, you know, 10 or 12 players who are, you know, largely pretty interchangeable. And on any given night, any one of them could step up and be the offensive hero. You know, we've seen it be KCP. We've seen it be Kuzma, JC. So, you know, you've really got to be able to adjust and just play with what play the guys that are really having the great nights. And that's something that, like you've said, Luke's really been criticized for. And I know at times even I've been super frustrated because there have been nights where Jordan's been playing well or Kuzma's been playing well, and then he takes him out and puts the starting lineup back in and we end up, you know, losing the game. And so I was really excited to see that finally Luke, you know, was starting to learn that, you know, let's just keep rolling with the guys who are playing well. And it worked for them in Charlotte. So hopefully it's something that Luke's going to continue to do. And I think it is. I think this has all just been, you know, a learning process. People don't realize that, you know, this is Luke's, I think, yeah, like only second season as a head coach. So he's learning with the guys. And it's something that he, it's still a learning process for him. But I think we're all moving in the right direction. I think he's also saying the right things with the whole exactly. LeVar Ball situation. I mean, he's, mm-hmm. he's doing, he's saying everything that he should be about that, that you know, LeVar Ball criticizing him doesn't really matter to him, that they're not taking uh, a parent's opinions into, into account or anything like that. Um, as you mentioned, he's getting better. He is growing, right? We saw Luke Walton at the end of, oh, what was the game where he called timeout and the Lakers, oh, it's against the Golden State Warriors. The Lakers had the ball with about five seconds left. Julius Randle was on the break. And it was questionable whether he should have let Randle go. Maybe he would have kicked that ahead to um, to Lonzo Ball. And the Lakers could have got something off that. Of course, the Lakers fans, if you watched that game, Lakers versus Warriors from the other week, um, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Luke Walton, rather than letting the Lakers fast break with a tie game and five seconds left, he called timeout, set up a play. Brandon Ingram missed at the buzzer, and went into overtime the Lakers lost. Well, this time against the Philadelphia 76ers, similar situation, and this time he let the Lakers go. He let them play. They found Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram moved the ball into the corner to Lonzo. Lonzo drove, then kicked it out to Ingram for the three to win the game. So it, it was like Luke just learned his lesson right there. He realized that it was time to trust the team to run a fast break at the end of the game and let them go and see what happens, and it ended up, ended up working out for him. So we're seeing Luke Walton evolve. We're seeing him improve, just like we're seeing these players improve. And I think that's a very positive thing for the Lakers. Moving on. Number two on our list. Well, number two is the defense. I'm actually switching things up a little bit here. Number two, Um, I made a last second. I'm calling on audible. I think number two (laughs) is the Lakers defense. Right now, they are eighth. In defensive rating. Woohoo. Big deal, right? I mean, that doesn't sound like much. Eighth, right? You don't get a ribbon for for eighth place. But this team was 30th last season. They were dead last in defensive rating. And right now they're eighth. They've been in the top 10 all season. They have made some forays into the top five. Their defense has grown by leaps and bound and bounds, and that is a testament to the players on the team, the efforts they've put in, and to Luke Walton and his coaching staff for putting their focus on the defensive end and understanding that if they're going to be a fast-breaking team, it has to begin with getting a stop. Yeah, you know... Like you said, eighth in defensive efficiency, you know, maybe isn't so exciting for everyone. But for us, it's like, you know, Christmas morning and every holiday wrapped up into one. We're so used to the Lakers being, you know, pretty much a dead last in anything that has to do with defense. And obviously, you know, you can accredit some of that success to, you know, bringing guys like 
KCP and Brooke Lopez, but it's really taken the whole team to come together collectively and really put in a ton of effort on the defense. And I've seen that, you know, guys are switching better. They're communicating on defense. Guys like even, I know Kyle Kuzma isn't supposed to be the best defender, but I'm seeing him put in a ton of effort. Josh Hart, I think, has been playing great defensively. And, you know, the whole team is really understanding that their offense does rely on their defense because if they get a stop, they're able to push the pace and get out in transition, which is obviously what they want. And everyone's just really been able to come together and just try harder on defense, which is all I could have asked for. I, you know, I think the thing that was lacking in previous seasons was just that the effort wasn't there. They just didn't seem to care about their defense. And that's the biggest thing standing out for me this season is that they're seeming, they're trying on defense and they're really putting a big emphasis on it and it's showing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's definitely making a difference that they are having that effort and it's, and it's top to bottom. It's every single guy is putting forth effort. I mean, Corey Brewer, if he plays he plays oh, yeah. three minutes. He is crashing to the floor, diving all over the place. He's getting deflections. He's getting steals. Brooke Lopez, last I looked, he was first in the league in challenging shots. He challenged more shots than than anyone else. I mean, and he doesn't even play all that many minutes. So the, the Lakers have guys out there that are willing to go all out on the defensive end. And, and that's making a huge difference. They are switching everything, especially when they don't have Lopez on the floor, when they've got a smaller center like Randall or even Nance in there playing the center spot. They are switching everything like crazy. Teams are trying to make them pay for it. But for the most part, the Lakers defense has been doing a really, really good job. So very impressive stuff from them. Number one overall, I, I switched this one to number one because they are number one in this category. The Lakers are first in the NBA in pace. And this is a huge deal because Magic Johnson back in September, he said the Lakers need to do two things to attract marquee free agents this summer. They need to play better defensively and they need to play the game at a faster pace. They need a faster pace of play. And that doing that will make the Lakers into a fun team again. And you know what? We're seeing it happen. Number one in the league in pace right now. Eighth in defense. Those are both massive improvements. They're running like crazy. And this is what I love about what just happened the other night when the Lakers took on the Charlotte Hornets. You could hear it on TV. You could hear the Charlotte bench. Every time the Lakers got a defensive rebound, they're screaming, get back, get back, because the Hornets realized that they had to, had to give up trying to get offensive rebounds and run back because otherwise the Lakers were going to beat them down the floor and get easy baskets. You love that when you see teams having to stop doing what they want to do in order to deal with something that you are really, really good at. Yeah, man. I mean, Saturday night's game against the Charlotte Hornets, that was, they were moving so fast. I was like texting my friend. I'm like, I feel like I'm watching a hockey game right now, but that's what the Lakers have to do because they don't play well offensively in a half court set because, you know, they don't have some, they don't have really consistent outside shooting. So they've got to be able to just, you know, throw those outlet paths and passes and really just be able to go into transition ball because that's when they're at their best, you know, Obviously, a lot of that has to do with Lonzo Ball. He's, you know, great at throwing those outlet passes. Sometimes I'm like, who is this, Tom Brady or Lonzo Ball? But, you know, we even saw that against Charlotte. They were able to score 28 points off of fast breaks. And I think that was really the difference maker in the game was just how fast the Lakers were playing. And like you said, it's always exciting to see, you know, teams, because I even heard it too. They were saying, get back, get back. And it's good that we're starting to put some fear into these other teams. So I like it. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're having to adjust their game plan to what the Lakers do. And I feel like it's been a while since we've seen that. I mean, I think back to the days of Shaq, when teams had a game plan for how you're going to deal with Shaq or how you're going to deal with Kobe. The last few seasons, it's been pretty much like, you know, just, just throw your normal defense out there, do what you do, and you're going to be just fine. Well, now the Lakers have something. They have an identity. They're going to run like hell. They're going to run, 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 run. They're going to run the ball right down your throat, and they are going to try to fast break you to death. And that's who they are right now. They're a stingy defensive team and a team that likes to run. And this is what has me so optimistic for this group. You mentioned their half-court offense is not good. They don't have three-point shooters. Rob Palinka has already said that he recognizes this problem, that they need shooting, they need to address some of these issues. If they can keep their pace at this level, And if they can keep their defense at this level and then add a little bit of shooting 
improve in the half court, they're going to jump up a lot. A few little tweaks, a little bit of improvement to their fast break offense or their their half court offense, a little bit of improvement to their outside shooting, and they're going to start winning a lot more games. We're going to see this team really in, but the foundation is being set by what they're doing on both the defensive end and in transition right now. Maybe I'm a little bit too too fired up and too optimistic, but that's the way I'm seeing things at this point. No, I completely agree. And it makes it more exciting. You know, I want to see these guys. We have a young team. I want to see them go and run. And that's the kind of play that they need to be doing. We have these young guys. They got young legs. They're fast players. You've got guys like Lonzo Ball who's able to do those outlet passes. This is what we need to be able to do in order to be successful. So it's nice to see the Lakers doing that. So that pretty much concludes our, our list, right? I, I think we covered we covered a ton. I think we oh, yeah. covered it. Is there anything that I left off that, that you can think of or, or is, was that a good list? I like that list. I can't even think of anything. I mean, just hopefully that we can get, you know, push this two-game winning streak to three games. We've got a chance against the Knicks on Tuesday night, so hopefully – that's right. And you know what? Here, I'm going to I'm gonna throw this out there right now. Kind of put this out in the universe, all right? Okay. The Lakers have the Knicks on Tuesday, which, I mean, that's a, a winnable game, but won't be easy. The Knicks have been a lot better this season than people have expected. After the Knicks, though, they go play at Cleveland. Then they're at home against Golden State. Then they're on the road against Houston. Then they're on the road against Golden State. That's oh, yeah. their stretch. They, they go Cleveland, Golden State, Houston, Golden State. That's a four-game stretch. And then they have to meet up with the Portland Trailblazers, who have actually been been very, very good on Saturday, December 23rd. And then it's f- headed to a Christmas matchup with the Minnesota Timberwolves. So that is, that's a number of really difficult games in there, especially with those games against the Cavs, the Warriors, and the Rockets, who are all playing at a high level right now. The Cavs are kind of up and down, but, but still, those are some tough games in there. So hang in there, Lakers fans. <laughs> <laughs> if they lose some of these, I mean, expect losses in these games. If they win one, cool, celebrate it. But let's not panic if they lose to some of these teams. They're not at the this, this stage right now where they should be consistently beating the Warriors or Rockets or anything like that. Appreciate the journey. Watch them grow. Watch them develop. And know that they are on the right track because of all the stuff that we just talked about on our big list of 10 positive storylines going on in the world of the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, you know, and obviously that's a pretty rough schedule, but they're going to be exciting games. We saw the Lakers played very well against Golden State the other night, and, you know, we've got, we gave them a little bit of a run for their money, so they should still be very entertaining games. I'm not, you know, necessarily expecting them to win those games. You never know. It might be an early Christmas miracle, but I'm still expecting them to be really exciting games, and I think just in general, Laker fans, we have a lot to be excited about with this team. Absolutely. Well, I think that about wraps things up for today. Hannah, thanks so much for coming on here and and making a a kind of a a downer of a day a lot better. Of course, two podcasts in one day. What can I, what more can I ask for? (laughs) (laughs) So guys, don't forget, go to proflowers.com, use that promo code Lakers, get 20% off any bouquet of $29 or more. Of course, head over to iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe to this show. If you have any questions, put them in the review section. We'll be happy to talk about them. Uh, my name is Trevor Lane. You can find me on Twitter at Trevor underscore Lane. My guest has been Hannah Kulik. You can find her on Twitter at Hannah underscore, underscore Kulik. Both of us write for LakersNation.com, and you can find our work there. And, of course, don't forget, guys, go to LakersNation.com for all the latest breaking Lakers news, especially as we inch closer to the trade deadline. We're going to have all kinds of fantastic content there. This has been the Lakers Nation podcast. We'll be back soon with a new episode, and see ya.